Hey YouTubers, unboxing video time. Let's go ahead and get this open. Cool, another CPU cooler, right? Um, in case you haven't noticed, we have bought quite a few CPU coolers lately. Maybe uh, we've gone a little overboard. I did get uh, one, one of those for free, so I guess I haven't bought all of them recently. But uh, this is uh, ID cooling and uh, kind of similar to the thermal take. Let's uh let's bring the thermal take down. Of course it's installed. So you know funny thing is I didn't have any of this style. I wanted to get the Noctua. What do I do? I go buy this thermal take one and then now we've bought this ID cooling one which will be smaller I believe. And so uh this is the i5 or IS-50X V2. It's supposed to be LGA 1700 compatible. TDP is 130. The one I just showed you, I believe, was uh, 140 watts. So, whatever reason, you know, this design is, is not spectacular for uh, in comparison to a single tower, right? It doesn't have as, probably not going to have as much of a heat fin on it. So, let's go ahead and get this open. And starts with uh, manual. Looks like that's in Russian. Uh, installation guide. IS series. And if you've seen the channel, you know I have bought quite a few ID cooling CPU coolers. So there are the parts. There is what it's compatible with. And you see um, probably one of those brackets, sets of brackets, is LGA 1700. Uh, number three is LGA. So they show you how to install. Let me shut the light off for a second, folks. That's yeah, not going to help, is it? Um, they show you how to install all the different uh, or the recent types of Intel. So you got 1200, 1151, and then there's AMD 4, which we have plenty of those. Lights back on. So, box of parts. Let's go ahead and open these up. I think what we'll see, I believe this is Chinese made. You know, kind of in the same ballpark as uh, V-True. Um, about the same quality. I, I couldn't tell you if I thought one was better than the other. Thermal paste. This is this is going to be good for at least a couple. So this tells me that they since they included this, it's not pre-installed. Different brackets in here. Uh, they are a little rough. They could have did a better job of uh, cleaning those up. But uh, you know, just looking at it, it kind of looks like crap. To be honest with you. Um, usually, you know, it's nice to have nice and polished and all that good stuff. These are, uh, don't quite look as finished as what I usually get from these guys. But yeah, you have the, the different brackets that you'll need for LGA 1700, 1200, 1151, and then all of the hardware. So I'm going to put this stuff back in here. Um, now, I was going to try and install this in the Z690. We, uh, unfortunately won't be seeing the Z690 anymore on the channel. I won't go into details why that is, but uh, it's just not going to be on the channel anymore. So, I don't know where we're going to put this, folks. I've got a lot of CPU coolers, but not a lot of CPUs. Or not a lot of 12 gen CPUs anymore, so go figure. Kind of actually, uh, to be honest with you, we're waiting for 13th gen. And then, uh, you know, new AMD. So I'm actually kind of getting rid of a few things to prepare for that. Because that's going to be an expensive transition for me uh, to go there. Alright, so this is going to be easy to install, I believe. You probably have to go through the fan blades, I'm sure, to get to whatever brackets. Of course, you'll take this piece of tape off here. Uh, you probably want to clean it after you take it off because these have a sticky residue not a lot of 
not much of a heat sink here. So I can see why the TDP for this is less than the thermal take. Um, now the fins are a lot closer than the thermal take. If we were to check out the thermal take again, you see that. And then these are much denser, right? Well, whether that's such a good thing or not, um, you know, it's another story. So could potentially be about the same surface area. Now, the fan blade, you see how that is, right? If we look at it from this angle. Uh, why they didn't make the heat sink extend out further and have one of these pipes come over to this area, I don't think that's such a great idea. Now, obviously, that's for, uh, you know, ram. You want to have enough clearance for the ram. Uh, I wish I had a motherboard that had some RAM sitting in it, but uh, if we look at this this design here, right, so see where the RAM is, and then you can tell that that's going to be right above the RAM, just in basically in that spot. Um, so does this thing pop off? That's a good question. This one actually, folks, looks like it's pretty much stuck to it and see how it okay so four screws here it would appear that you could uh, actually two okay so there's a bracket that attaches the fan in four places so that would detach your fan now could you put a bigger fan in there I wonder um, maybe a better fan I don't. Sadly, I have a mechanical engineering degree, and we took uh, fluid mechanics, some classes that had uh, airflow. I don't remember ever coming up with a a class where we talked about the thickness of the fan blade or the the fan itself, right? So you see the difference there. Would it be better to replace this 120 millimeter fan with one that's thicker and has bigger blades? Uh, that is a darn good question, right? Obviously, uh, whichever one pushes more air is uh, going to be the better one. And potentially, if you found a better fan that would fit on this, that may, be, uh, may work out better, right? Now, the way this is designed, though, of course, you see the way the fan, the fan is here. Um, most of the time when it's designed like this, you've got the intake side exhausting air across the, the heat sink. Um, I'll be curious when I start running this if it's uh, actually running in that direction or if you know it's been swapped. But uh, you won't see that in this video. Um, if I, when I do get this thing running, we'll... Uh, We'll see if it's actually pushing air down or it's pushing it the other way. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Looking forward to using this, though. I, uh, you know, let's talk CPUs, right? So, 12th gen, uh, what would I consider using this with? Well, not going to use it with the i9. It's just not going to just not gonna work good for that. Wouldn't use it with the i7, 12700F. Uh, might work decently with an i5, 12, 400, 500, 600. Uh, i3, 12, 100 would be good for it. Pentium, good. And like the Celeron, it'd be, you know, overkill, right? So, now talk in 11th gen, you know, same deal, pretty much. 10th gen. I don't think there's there's a case where really I would use an i7 with this. Maybe they, you know go back to the i7 8700 or something. But uh, otherwise, you know, this is an i5 and, and below. Definitely not meant for uh, unlock processor. Uh, could you use it with lock process unlock processor? Yes, but you would want to turn off a uh, turbo boost probably, and then with the cost of performance you were dropping the amount of power used 
and then something like this this would actually work decently but uh thanks for checking out the video folks uh please like please subscribe thank you